Dear Patriots, before the news starts, please, subscribe to our patriotic channel by clicking the subscribe button. Give us a thumbs up to this video. Don't forget to leave your opinion below in the comments section. Share the news on Facebook and Twitter so you friends see it. Thank you. Laura Ingram accurately predicts GOP's future if they keep running away from Trump like cowardly Ed Gillespie. Laura Ingram just made an ominous prediction and the GOP better listen up. In a big race with no national implications but plenty of national hype, the GOP do the unthinkable. They ran a card-carrying member of the GOP establishment named Ed Gillespie. CNN's Chris Siliza described him thusly. A former chairman of the Republican National Committee. A senior member of Bush World. A GOP lobbyist. A conservative but someone willing to compromise. A pragmatist, not an ideologue. And this is the guy the GOP picked to run? But to make it worse, Ed ran away, not towards President Trump. It is the same mistake that Democrats made when they all thought Obama was toxic to voters and ran away from him only to see Obama win a second term and the Democrats lose seats. It was a classic Beltway blunder, they believed the polls and ran cowardly races. The GOP better not make that same mistake or they will find themselves losing Congress. As Laura Ingram pointed out on her show last night. She bashed the GOP for running a weak candidate with a weak message who would not embrace Trump, and made an accurate prediction of the GOP's future if they don't embrace Trump. She said, I made this point really consistently that there is no middle ground with conservative populism. That is the wave of the future. That there is no constituency for open borders, open markets, and endless military interventionalism. So maybe Gillespie wouldn't have won if President Trump campaigned with him. But trying to be half and half out with Donald Trump was never going to work. If you dip your toe in just a little bit you're going to turn out just like Ed Gillespie did, political roadkill. Laura is correct, embrace Trump and what America really wants or be political roadkill. Choose wisely GOP. Hours after Trump gives powerful speech in South Korea, North Korea goes totally berserk. North Korean officials lost their ever-loving minds on Wednesday after President Trump delivered a powerful speech in South Korea just hours before, according to the Daily Caller. We don't care what that mad dog may utter because we've already heard enough, DPRK officials said. During the speech, Trump issued what was arguably his strongest warning yet to Kim Jong-un telling him do not underestimate us, do not try us. He continued. History is filled with discarded regimes that have foolishly tested America's resolve. North Korea is not the paradise your grandfather envisioned. It is a hell that no person deserves, he went on. We will offer a path to a much better future, should the North decide to change direction. Here's a clip of the speech. President Trump's speech was met with standing ovation in South Korea, the North, however, was less enthralled, to say the least. The United States is threatening us with nuclear aircraft carriers and strategic bombers. They are challenging us with with the most vicious and demeaning provocations but we will counter those threats by bolstering the power of justice in order to take at the root cause of aggression and war, officials said. President Trump continues his Asian tour in China today, where he will attend meetings alongside President Xi Jinping. Many are still anticipating a missile test or other threatening action from North Korea during his time overseas, but none has yet occurred. Seconds after taunting GOP with election results, Obama got crushed by Trump's instant payback. It's no secret who Obama was rooting for in the recent Virginia elections, but his behavior following the Dems narrow victory was beyond childish. Not only did he state the painfully obvious, but he did so in an effort to jab President Trump and the Republican Party. Obama made his statement on the Democratic gubernatorial wins via Twitter Wednesday morning. This is what happens when the people vote. Congrats at Ralph Northam and at Phil Murfinge.
and congratulations to all the victors in state legislative, county and mayor's races. Every office in a democracy counts, Obama tweeted. What about the people who didn't vote Democrat? Or the people who elected President Donald Trump? Where's his praise for those American voters, who are also part of his democracy? The funniest part about Obama's celebration is the lack of real competition his candidate faced. President Trump made a last-ditch effort to bolster Gillespie's chances, but it was clearly too late. If Gillespie had followed the president from day one, there's no doubt the governorship would have been far more obtainable. Ed Gillespie worked hard but did not embrace me or what I stand for, Trump tweeted after the election results went live. But Trump isn't done. His next tweet shut down Obama completely and reminded the country who's in charge. Don't forget, Republicans won four out of four House seats, and with the economy doing record numbers, we will continue to win, even bigger than before. Hard to argue with numbers. Obama and his leftist minions may need to throw a parade for every little victory, but President Trump has his sights set on the bigger picture. It's no surprise that Obama would continue to think small, but more and more Americans are thinking bigger every day. Making America great takes real leadership, and President Trump will not sit by and let spineless swamp rats like Obama drag his name and party through the mud. Did you stand with Trump? Do you want Obama to get lost? Let us know and share your support with the world. Sources, DailyCaller.com As Chinese rolled out red carpet for President Trump, Melania stole show with outfit, video. President Trump arrived to a hero's welcome from the Chinese. The red carpet was literally rolled out for Donald and Melania Trump. A military honor guard met them as the plane arrived and some very excited kids lined his motorcade route to give him a proper send-off from the airport. Compare that to what happened to Obama when he last visited China. The Chinese left him hanging on the runway. Forget about the red carpet, they didn't even provide the stairs to get off the plane. Seriously. The Trumps moved on to get a rare honor from the Chinese. A first ever for an American president, a state dinner in the Forbidden Kingdom. According to the South China Morning Post, Chinese Foreign Ministry spokeswoman Hua Chunying said the state visit plus red carpet welcome was in return for the warm, considerate reception and the high standard and thoughtful arrangement the Trumps made for Xi and his wife Peng Lin in Florida in April. Chinese officials went on to say that the two leaders have a good relationship, much better than with Obama, and they looked forward to a close working relationship with Trump. But despite the red carpet, it was Melania Trump, as usual, who stole the show. Her grace, elegance, and class were on full display and literally took the breath away from the gathered Chinese. And she looked great as usual and stunned everyone with her keen eye for fashion at the Peking Opera. Share if you are proud of the job Melania is doing. The minute Sarah Sanders appeared in Asia, journalists noticed the shocking thing on her shoulders. On Wednesday, Trump visited the Korean demilitarized zone. One brave soldier did huge chivalrous act for press secretary Sarah Sanders. According to the Yonhap News Agency, the weather was cold that morning and hovered around 40 degrees at the U.S. Army garrison at Yongsan. Sanders was seen shivering and a U.S. Army ranger offered his jacket to her. Image source Twitter via at press was twing. While attempting to transport Trump to the Korean DMZ, military pilots were unable to see each other because of the dense fog. They turned around. There wasn't enough visibility to land, Sanders said. It would have been really dangerous. According to Western journalism, they waited for the weather to clear but conditions just got worse instead. It's a shame how the media treats our president. He is such a champ and yet they attack and attack him. Share this if you think that we have the best people in our military. Let's send them a thank you on behalf of every Trump supporter. Comment thank you soldiers for helping out our Sarah Sanders.
During round of golf with Trump, Japan's PM takes a tumble that's bound to leave a mark. It's possible the Japanese Prime Minister just experienced one of the more embarrassing moments of his life. And it's possible it happened while he was standing mere feet from the world's most powerful leader. And it's possible we've got it on video. Check it out, via Barstool Sports. President Trump was golfing with Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo Abe while on a visit to the country during his Asia tour when the leader apparently lost his balance on the course. This is about as cringy as it gets, to say the least. But like, mad props to Shinzo for landing on his feet the way he did after that initial roll through the sand, that was some skillful footwork on his part. It appears in the video that Trump might not have noticed what happened, which would be pretty dang lucky for Shinzo Abe, should that be the case. Nevertheless, what a stumble. What? A video. This is why we love the internet, folks. Trump's tour also took him to South Korea, where he made a powerful speech against North Korea that was met with thunderous applause and a standing ovation. Naturally, the North Koreans weren't too happy, let's be honest, they never are, and they went sufficiently berserk in the hours following.